it goes well. Field Agent McGinnis submitting my follow-up report on my investigation into the Federal Bureau of Control. Uh, for this one, we're going to be focusing on what they've been studying that they refer to as altered world events. I believe our guys over in the research sectors will call this a reality shift. Um, it's been a lot easier getting information over these past few weeks. Uh, they've I've pretty much been able to just blend in with the staff on the account of 90% of the facility seems to be concerned with a massive ongoing security breach that's happening inside. The whole place is a fucking war zone. It looks like something's changing some of their staff, making them hostile to the others inside. Whole sections of the facility seem to be changing and being morphed. I, it's, I'm still getting information on this. But I believe that the information that I've got in this report is going to help enlighten some of that. Um, according to them, I guess altered world events are when we have an instance of reality shifting out in the wild, so to speak, you know, in the middle of a town or in a neighborhood. And they go and they investigate these things. And apparently there's. I guess some of these events that are link are linking to as yet discovered regions or places that they control and nobody else has been able to get to. But it seems as though they're building a very strong understanding of what exactly they're supposed to be doing and how to manipulate these things and how these events tie in with us as a contributing factor. So more Dr. Darling, more text documents. Even a little slip-up I managed to find. Seems some of their staff were talking a little loosely when they shouldn't have been. Uh, this is Field Agent McGinnis. Time is currently 8.44 p.m. October 10th, 2011. Um, hopefully all goes well. There is a curious correlation with the yet unknowable forces intruding upon our world in the form of altered world events. These forces gravitate toward archetypal objects, a gun, a, a television, a, a supposedly haunted house. So clearly humanity affects this process. Our collective unconscious is a, a map of sorts. We hold the key, but we don't know how to use it. We create these archetypes through everyday life popular culture, urban legends, but we are observing and influencing a complicated system in action. We can change the likelihood of something being a receptacle for these forces just by thinking about it. But we haven't found a method to control the outcome. And yet, there is something unique in us, in our dreams, in the conceptual reality with power with our minds. What's the cause and what's the effect? Are we the starting point or just a necessary evil in this? A byproduct, a reflection, a projection. We'll struggle to find the answers to these hard questions or die trying. <laughs> Bright Falls, AWE-35, Event Summary. An unconfirmed threshold manifestation at Cauldron Lake, Washington, resulted in a fictional story written by the author Alan Wake, creating an AWE in which reality was altered to match that of the story, though only locally and for a limited time. Event Response Mr. Kirkland, head of investigations, was alerted on September 13, 2010 by ex-bureau agent Frank Breaker, C that an AWE event was taking place in Bright Falls, Washington, referred to events investigated in 1970, 1976, and 1978. 
Breaker had received a call from Barry Wheeler, Alan Wake's literary agent, on behalf of Breaker's daughter, Sarah, who is the current sheriff of Bright Falls. A bureau field team arrived at the site two days later, only to confirm that the event was over. Interviews were conducted, refer to the 1970 Thomas Zane, 1976, 1978 Odin Anderson, and Tor Anderson. Alan Wake was believed to investigator. Eyewitness reports highlight an old light switch, possible object of power, that missing. Wake was not found at the scene. Reports claim he dived into the lake, but no body was recovered in the search. Bright Falls, AWE-35. Details. Alice Wake, Mr. Wake's wife, was found during the Bureau investigation. She was interviewed and evaluated. She showed signs of severe mental trauma in the form of memory loss. She was later directed to treatment. It was concluded that she had been trapped in the threshold during its manifestation. Notable individuals still missing after the Bright Falls event are FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale and Dr. Emil Hartman, referred to The Creator's Dilemma and the file RE The Cauldron Lake Lodge. Bureau researchers believe this event was the result of a forceful perception of subjective reality stemming from Mr. Wake, overlapping on our own. Wake had been flagged as a potential para-utilitarian, see Prime Candidate Program File for more details. In 2011, a book by Clay Stewart titled The Alan Wake Files was published by Roundabout Press, New York and Olympia. Agents interviewed Clay Stewart and suspected minor para-utilitarian sensitivity. He was placed under indefinite surveillance. Notes. A monitoring station was established at Cauldron Lake to alert the Bureau of any future activity. Butte, AWE-17. Event Summary. A spate of disappearances was traced to a home in the city of Butte, where Bureau agents discovered a translocative light switch cord. Event Response. Bureau agents arrived at the home of a local celebrity located at... ...which had been connected to a total of... ...disappearances in the area. Agents found no one inside. While searching a closet, an agent pulled the light switch cord and disappeared from view. Another agent was selected to pull the cord in order to replicate the event. He disappeared as well. Both agents were, were discovered at the oldest house days later, found in a sealed room by rangers exploring in a new area of the house. The light switch cord in the Butte's home closet disappeared during this incident. August 4th, 1964, we discovered the oldest house while investigating a suspected altered world event case in the New York City subway tunnels. The agents found their way up into the building. Once we became aware of it, it was there. For the rest of the population, it was hiding in plain sight, a, a slippery blind spot, seemingly discouraging observation. It's a, a place of power. An ongoing AWE of its own, seemingly adhering to its physical outer constraints and yet constantly breaking the known boundaries of reality. It's, it's unstable, shifting. Note, for more details on control points and the research and process to stabilize and secure the core sectors, refer to a separate presentation. After extensive research and investigation, the Bureau made the building its headquarters on November 13th, 1968. The Federal Bureau of Control was never out in the open. This, this was always an obfuscated, classified top secret operation. So imagine our surprise when the building's observation resistant aspects began in some unquantifiable way to affect the Bureau as a whole. AWE-17 Details According to their testimony, the agents had been transported from the Butte home to a roadside motel named the Ocean View Motel and Casino, and discovered a room key by performing a ritual, 
C file MOT-01. The key opened a door marked with an inverted black pyramid, which they only learned after a lengthy period of trial and error. After pulling another motel cord found inside this room, they were transported to the oldest house. The disappearances of the home's owner and the other locals of Butte have been attributed to the light switch cord. The Ocean View Motel is now known to have many doors and pathways. Since the occurrence, identical light switch cords to the one found in the Butte home have begun appearing throughout the oldest house. At the time of writing, light cords have been found in the oldest house, located in the and sectors. These all access the Ocean View Motel, though how exactly this link operates is but initial hypothesis center on the Butte AWE as a See Dr. Darling presentation 24.3 for more details. During an AWE investigation, our agents discovered a light switch cord in a Butte bungalow closet. They pulled the cord and were instantly transported to the Ocean View Motel and Casino. Dream like haze. Whoa. Inside, they found a door marked with an inverted black pyramid. And just like that, it led back to the oldest house, some 2,000 miles from Montana. N now we're finding the cord in increasing numbers throughout the Bureau. Somehow the two places, they, they became in tune to each other. The, the actual physical location of the ocean view is, is, is a mystery. Stepping beyond its walls has so far proven impossible. A place of power, like the oldest house. N slash A, AWE-18, event summary. A possible AWE in which an unnamed individual experienced transcorporeality via a phone line. Event is notably similar to AWE dash in which event response. Event is believed to have been caused by as a result, the following measures have been taken to prevent N slash A AWE dash one eight. Details. Transcript of a call to the California State Emergency Services. Dispatcher. 911, what is your emergency? Voice. Hello? Hello. I'm here. Can you hear me? Dispatcher. I can hear you, ma'am. Where are you? I'm, um, inside the wires. I'm lost. Ma'am, have you been drinking tonight? I feel like I'm stretching through the wire towards you. Don't hang up. I might go if you hang up. Go where, ma'am? Go. Gone. Away. Okay, and can you describe your surroundings? Ma'am? Hello? Ma'am? Note. Dispatcher attempted to call the number back, but it was no longer in service. Havana, AWE-48. Details. Bureau medical staff personally evaluated the injured embassy personnel when they arrived back in the country. While the victims reported cognitive issues, dizziness, and fatigue, further testing by Bureau Medics found intense cell damage similar to that of radiation exposure. Agents and research staff remained to take soil samples from the surrounding area, but, na but found no trace of N beyond the health issues of the staff. The communications department disseminated a story of foreign powers using on the embassy staff, resulting in various health issues that required the embassy to be evacuated. The story successfully took hold, gaining brief international attention. All right, take this down. The situation in Cuba has been evaluated by the relevant authorities. The mysterious illness affecting the staff at the U.S. Embassy in Havana was caused by sonic weaponry in the hands of a foreign power. Numerous personnel have damage to the inner ear, but most are expected to make a full recovery. Of course, the event also damaged their cellular walls, but you can't blame that on some stupid noise gun. 
<laughs> Thank God no local doctors examined them first. Honestly, what are the odds an altered item would show up inside a U.S. embassy? Talk about good luck, huh? <laughs> so much easier to... Hey, are you still recording this? I've been fielding questions recently regarding HRAs. What are they for? Do you always need to wear them? And what's the deal with the headroom resonance anyway? I... Despite what you may have heard, HRAs are not monitoring devices. We're not tracking your movements or listening to your conversations while you're wearing them. We do that regardless whether or not you're wearing an HRA. Think of them as, uh, as a uh, life preserver. Only instead of water, the, the thing HRAs protect you from is um, classified. One day that classified, not water, might pour in and you'll be glad you got, a, got an HRA keeping you afloat. And if you don't have an HRA, don't worry. It'll be uh, quick and painless. <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. We're making more.